Alice Miss Pearson, and this video is all about integers. Really, the basic part of integers is getting to know them some and comparing and ordering them. And also, we'll talk a little bit about absolute value. All right, um, as you can see here, it says materials. These are the materials you're going to need for this particular video. So if you need to, go ahead and pause the video so you can go ahead and get those materials out. If you're looking for your spiral notebook, you're going to go to the notes section of your spiral notebook. All right, great. Go ahead and copy down the vocabulary that you're going to need for this lesson, as well as the title that you see here. So you're going to write down integers, comparing and ordering. And the vocabulary, absolute value, is equal to the distance from zero. So go ahead and write all of the information down, pause the video if you need to, and then come on back and we'll talk about all of what it goes along with integers. Alright, to get started with, you really need to know what an integer is. And there are different categories of numbers just like there are different categories of jobs, like in public servants, and there's all different kind of public servants. You can be um, part of the Parks and Recreation Department, part of the Education Department, part of the Police Department, and the Fire and Rescue, and the EMS. Those are all subsets underneath, all part of government workers. Well, here is real numbers. Part of real numbers. Well, remember when you were in kindergarten and you just counted one, two, three, four? Those were counting numbers. And then when you got to be at a little bit higher grades, then they gave you also the zero, one, two, three, four. So they made those numbers a little bit more broad. They gave you a little bit more to be included. Those are called whole numbers. Notice whole has an O in there. O for zero, they added the zero. And then now that you're in seventh grade and you did a little bit at the end of sixth grade, we expanded that information even more and said, okay, we can also include integers, all those positive and negative numbers. Remember, those positive and negatives go on and on in either direction. If you think about a number line, it goes on and on in both directions. So integers are a type of real number. These are all real numbers, numbers you see all the time. All right, integers, there's different ways that you can um, describe a number. You could say that it's positive or you could say that it's negative. When you have a positive number, sometimes you see the little plus sign in front. Sometimes you don't. You just see a plain six. Both of those represent a positive six. You have six dollars in your pocket, let's say, or it's six degrees outside. Positive can have a symbol or it doesn't have to have a symbol. Negative numbers. Negative numbers have to have the little sign in front of the number. A negative three, you owe somebody three dollars. Or a negative three, it's below zero. Negative three below zero. Awfully cold. Here you have a number line. Notice the arrows in both directions. Those numbers go on forever and ever and ever in both directions. This could continue on. Notice how these numbers are counting backwards. We've got negative one, two, three, negative four, negative five, and that would continue. And the same goes in this direction. It's almost like you could fold this in half and they would be on top of each other. If you need to pause the video to write that down, go ahead and do so, otherwise I'm going to carry on. Alright, there's different things that you're going to have to be able to do with those integers, and one of them is comparing them. Whenever you're comparing integers, you are trying to decide, in looking at two numbers, which one is bigger. So here you have 4 and 6. Notice there's no symbol, so that must mean they're positive 4 and positive 6. So which one's bigger? Here, yes, you are going to be using those greater than, less than, or equal to symbols. You've got 0, 7, 0 and negative 4, negative 5, and negative 9. Go ahead and pause the video, write each of those examples down, and see if you can come up with the answers on your own. And then come on back and we'll go over them together. Remember, when you're looking at positive and negative numbers, it's helpful to think about a number line. The farthest to the right on a number line would be the bigger the value. Here you have zero dollars or you have seven dollars. Which one's better? Bigger is always better. Mouth always eats the bigger number. Zero and negative four, which one's bigger? Having nothing or owing somebody something? Owing somebody four dollars does not sound like a good idea to me. Zero is better. How about owing five dollars or owing nine dollars? Which one's better for you? owing five dollars, so that's the bigger number. You can also think of it on a number line. This is what it would look like. Isn't negative five farthest to the right? 
The farther to the right the number, the bigger the number is. Farthest to the right on a number line, the bigger it is. All right, let's take a look at ordering. When you're ordering integers, you're looking at multiple numbers and you're trying to make sure that you put them in order according to the directions. This is the biggest mistake students make. They forget to read those directions and they put it in least to greatest when it's supposed to be greatest to least or the other way around. Make sure you read those directions. Here I'm going to tell you to put them in least to greatest. Notice this one's already done for you. Negative 5 is the smallest number and then 0 and then 7. Can you kind of picture that on a number line? Here's 0, here's 7, here's negative 5. Move from smallest to biggest, left to right. All right, go ahead and try this one. Jot it down, then pause the video, try it on your own, and then come on back. Okay, we're doing least to greatest. Let's see if you got it. Negative 5 is the smallest, then negative 2 then 0, and then 6. We're going to be doing some more practice problems of those in class as well. Alright, absolute value. Absolute value is how far is a number from 0. A lot of people try to make this harder than it is. How far is it from 0? How many steps away from 0 is it? This is the symbol. Oh, and it looks like my numbers got a little mixed up. This is the symbol here. There's straight parallel lines, and there's a number inside. There's usually a number in here, okay? For instance, and this kind of gets smushed here a little bit, this is the absolute value of 4. Well, how far is 4 from 0? Four steps, right? How far is negative 4 from 0? Same thing, four steps. All you're doing is taking the number on the inside, and that's your answer. Absolute value of 4 is 4. Absolute value of negative 4 is also 4. You try these two examples here. Pause the video and then come on back. Okay, great. How far is negative 12 from 0? If I'm standing on negative 12 on the number line, how many steps to get to 0? 12. If I'm standing on 6, how far to get to 0? 6. Try not to make it more complicated than it is. Alright, here are some practice problems for you to try. Go ahead and jot them all down. Pause the video. Complete the examples and then come on back and try again. All right, let's go over the answers. The opposite of negative 3. This is a bit of a tricky one, isn't it? What's the opposite of negative 3? Well, what's the opposite of owing somebody $3? Having $3, right? So the opposite of negative 3 is positive 3. Write a situation for negative 5. There's so many. Um, Probably the most common that I think you can relate to the most is having money. So writing a situation for negative 5, that means I owe somebody $5. I borrowed $5 to buy something and I need to pay them back. I owe $5. Okay? Comparing negative 9 and negative 27, which one's bigger? Negative 9 or negative 27? If I owe somebody $9 or I owe somebody $27, which one's better for me? You got it. All right, putting them in order from least to greatest. All right, well, all my negative numbers are going to be the smallest. So I'm going to look at those. Which one's smaller? Okay, now let's look at all the positive numbers. We've got 8, 2, and 7. Least to greatest. Okay, and the last one, the absolute value of negative 28. How many steps is negative 28 from 0? 28. We're going to be doing some more practice problems in class. We'll see you then.